Christian's Tailgate Bar and Grill, voted Houston's best burger. Come by any of the five Houston area Christian's Tailgate locations and enjoy never frozen ground beef on a toasted bun with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, and your choice of cheese. Your award-winning burger is then served with hand-cut fries or buttermilk battered onion rings. Each tailgate location is a large selection of draft beer and $3 shots. Come early for the game and stay late for karaoke. Christian's Tailgate Bar and Grill with five Houston area locations. The following is a presentation of the Rice Sports Network Network. from Learfield IMG College. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield IMG College, welcome to Rice Owls Insider. Rice Owls Insider is presented by Christian's Tailgate, voted best burger in Houston, Carbach Brewing Company, crafted for serious fun, IBEW Local Union Number 716, and by Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Now, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Well, we hope that all is well and safe with you all out there in this uh, socially distant time. Hope you're washing your hands and that everything is safe with you and your family. Welcome to our next edition of Rice Owls Insider. I am voice of your Rice Owls, J.P. Heath, with not much to do. And uh, head coach Scott Perra uh, still uh, getting things done from his home. But, uh, Coach, how are you? Yeah, we're, we're doing fine. You know, we're, we're make, making the most of it, doing the best we can. Um, we're doing our part in, in following the guidelines. We're staying in. I think this is day 17 or whatever it is uh, of, of para self, para family quarantine. Uh, try and get out for walks you know, when I can. Uh, same with Alyssa. Try and get the girls out for some exercise when we can, hit the volleyball around or whatever. Other than that, we're, we're staying in and, uh, and just trying to be safe. How are the guys handling things, the team that you've been able to communicate? Yeah, we talk to them all the time. Um, they're doing, for the most part, doing pretty well. I mean, they're, they're obviously getting stir crazy. Uh, they're 18 to 22 year old kids who are, who are active, used to being around their friends, uh, you know, used to being around their girls and girlfriends as well. And it's hard on them. And, but when I talk to them, for the most part, they're doing pretty well. Um, you know, not everybody's super upbeat every time, but I, I understand. I get it. You know, there, there's a lot of downtime, a lot of, you know, sitting around, a lot of video game playing, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but but doing the, having the classes back up, <laughs> excuse me, helps some, but they're hanging in there. It was such an emotional ending to the season. And uh, so I'm going to kind of start off where we left off the post game show. And we'll touch on some of the team aspects, of course, here in a second, but just as a college basketball coach, how bizarre has this whole scenario been with um, not only just you guys, but just, I mean, you've got so many friends in the business. This is just a surreal time. It is. And, you know, obviously everybody plays it relevant to them because in their lives, but I also try and do the best I can to be, to, to be cognizant of what everybody else is dealing with, you know, which is in, in many ways way worse than what we are. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's challenging, but we're working through it. Um, communicating with our guys, communicating with the staff, making sure they're doing okay. Obviously, you know, my, my family back in Pennsylvania as well, but in terms of, you know, trying to talk to kids and, you know, recruit transfers without being able to visit or do anything face to face kids picking schools with never visiting the school or meeting the coach. It's a bizarre time. And, uh, it's going to be interesting, you know, you know, where it all plays out and when this all stops. But in the meantime, we'll keep doing the best we can. Yeah, and I assume like everybody else, just using FaceTime, like we're on Zoom right now, just using that to try to stay as up to, beat, as, up to date as possible. Yeah, especially with the staff. It's nice to meet with them when I can. Uh, I FaceTime the players every once in a while or just talk to them on the phone. Um, but, yeah, and then, and then recruits, you know, you're just trying – you're trying to build a, a relationship the best you can over, over phone conversations. And that's usually how it starts, but eventually it ends with a visit and, and time on campus. And so we got to try and get creative to present things to them that they can watch online as well. And uh, so it's just, it's like no other time that anybody's ever gone through. There's no roadmap for this or game plan. You just keep trying to do the best you can every day. Yeah, this is usually a time of the season where you go to the Final Four. I know it's uh, it's Captain Obvious, but 
uh, everybody's going through the same thing, but does that go through your mind? Like, Hey, right now I should be with kind of my coaching fraternity in this amazing event. I, I try not to do that. Um, I try and keep my mind the best I can in the present. I think sometimes being a coach helps you do that because you're always just trying to prepare your team for, for what is in front of you. And so in this case, you know, it's preparing my family and, and or and still my team for what, what's happening now. So I haven't thought a whole lot about the NCAA tournament or, or the Final Four. I'm just trying to, you know, make sure everybody's doing okay constantly. Stay tuned more here coming up on Rice House Insider. By the way, big thanks to Christian's Tailgate. Uh, they're still in operation here. They've got options. Cheeseburgers, grilled shrimp salad, quesadillas, buffalo chicken wraps, a lot of good grub. Uh, you can call that Westview location. That's right near the Rice Campus, 832-925-7922. More with Coach Para here on Rice House Insider after this. The lights, the sounds, the cameras, the electricity. If you can feel it, hear it, see it, chances are an IBEW electrician built it. The members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716 built the things that make Rice University and Houston great. When your next construction project needs to be on time and on budget, it's time to hire IBEW electricians. Learn more at IBEW716.net. Beer needs baseball and baseball needs beer. Good thing Little Woodrow's has plenty of both. Right in the heart of Rice Village, relax over indoor and outdoor games, sports, and drink specials that even college students can't refuse. With weekly trivias, bingo nights, and fun events, there's always something to do at your favorite local watering hole. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated on all our upcoming events and specials. Little Woodrow's, the official Rice Owls game day headquarters. At Smart Financial, we think your banking experience should feel like a home run. Since 1934, we have prided ourselves on providing hassle-free services with a game plan that focuses on people, not profits. If you live, work, or go to school at or around Rice University, text RICE to 276-278 to become a part of the winning team. That's RICE to 276-278. Smart Financial, proud sponsor of Rice Athletics, federally insured by the NCUA. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider and the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider with third year, I guess now soon to be fourth year head coach of our Rice Owls. Uh, Scott Perrell, have to get used to saying that. This brought to us by uh, Christian's Tailgate. And uh, Coach, a, a great stretch of games towards the end of the season, uh, starting with that February 1st win against North Texas. You won six of eight. You had that great stretch at the beginning of the season. So what are the highlights? And now that you and the staff have had a, a, a few weeks, which seems like a few months since you and I last talked, uh, what did you like about the season? What were the highlights? I, I think there was a lot of highlights uh, and a lot of great things that happened, you know, especially, you know, early with the win – against Penn, played one of the most complete games we've played probably in our three years here. Um, the win at Santa Barbara obviously will go down as one of the great wins at, 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 in my career here, no matter how long I'm here. I mean, to, to do that just doesn't happen very often. And the way it ended with Peyton and ca the California kid there making the, the buzzer beater in front of all his friends and family sure was, made it extra special. And then, you know, we beat an AAC school for the first time ever, uh, beating East Carolina in the Bahamas. So the preseason, I thought, overall was, was very good. Um, and obviously, we hit that lull there at the beginning of league play and then kind of ramped it back up and got back to who we were in, in the preseason and closed strong with, you know, you mentioned the North Texas game, a lot of fun, played terrific. Um, and then winning the games at, at Middle and UAB for the first time in school history, too, were, were, were obviously great pluses as well to notch things off as we continue to move forward and, and try and do things that haven't been done before. Yeah, we talked about that on a uh, week-to-week -week basis when we had our regular uh, weekly shows with you. Uh, but it seemed like when the guys did have that downtime, I mean, they, they didn't have that quit in them. They really uh, bounced back. And whenever there was a small losing streak, they, they seemed to really kind of piece that together and use that for their good. And, and you saw those benefits down the line. Yeah, I think, you know, when you have kids with high character, those things can happen. Kids that don't, you know, bail out. Kids that aren't blaming and looking for excuses, guys are just trying to get better. Uh, that's how you get out of little slumps like that, and and you stay with it. You know, you can't panic. Um, you got to believe in what you're doing. We did see results previously, so that helped in their mind too. They knew they were good enough to do it, and then they 
you know, he got it back to, to being who we were and, and playing really well. We talked about this some in the first segment. What's the key during this downtime? I mean, they, they might not. I mean, you tell me, can they play a lot? Like, how do they hone their skills when you can't really no. do too much? Of I, I don't know because, like, Zach Chrysler told me he went to a park in Philadelphia and the, the rims were boarded up. Um, so he couldn't even shoot a basket. Um, so it's hard. E each kid, you know, tries to get, I think, like Peyton had a hoop in his, his driveway so he could shoot some there, especially with his, he has a younger brother, so they could at least do some things there. But it's limited, JP. It's limited. Uh, I'm sure they're doing the best they can. I, I know Quincy told me he was able to find a couple different places uh, to shoot at. And, uh, but it's hard on all of them. And uh, they're trying to find a way and a place to, to at least stay active and, and touch a ball. And again, I know this comes with none of us know anything, okay? But um, Joe and I talked about last week that there could be some special waivers and everything. Would, would that affect basketball since basketball was so recent ending, or could there be some exceptions to try to get extra practice time here or there? Well, I don't see how. In other words, I talked about this with a bunch of people. So many teams had their seasons done, including ours. So what do you do with those seniors? And then oh, and only some seniors are allowed to come back. What about the seniors that are going to the NBA draft? So those teams aren't the same anyway. Uh, there's so many moving parts to it that, that I don't see how they do it for basketball or for winter sports. Spring sports, I totally get it. They played, what, 10% of their season? Yeah. Uh, or whatever. I, I just, look, I, I go with whatever they say. I just find it hard to, hard to fathom that, that that one would be passed. Yeah, speaking of those seniors, uh, you had five rock-solid guys. Just uh, tell us about them. And, I mean, the top of the list, uh, among others, Aiko. And I know this is emotional after that game. Now that it's been a few weeks, um, talk about Aiko and what he meant to the program. Yeah, you have time. When, as time goes on, you have time to reflect and look back on things, you know. And a Aiko's a guy, the best way to define him was he, he gave us everything he had, every opportunity he had. And then – as you do that over time and you play as many games and be as good as a shooter. And then all of a sudden you look up and, you know, he's holding school records. And uh, I think that's obviously the icing on the cake for him. It's something he'll have forever uh, with him, uh, especially when we, you know, give him those awards at one point in his career. Now maybe they get broken somewhere down the line, but for now he holds school records and uh, you know, the free throw one is going to be hard to beat. Uh, that's a heck, of a heck of a percentage and, and a, and a High, high bar that he put on that. So I'm obviously really proud of him. Uh, I'm happy for him that it ended, you know, the way it did with him, him getting a chance to accumulate those records. And because not a lot of guys, not a lot of guys have a chance to say they did that. Yeah, he could teach some kind of correspondence course at Rice just on toughness, just like, and you mentioned some of that, just he was playing on practically one leg, hit four or five threes in that last game against FIU, just, his grit, I always call him DC tough on the broadcast. He yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Aiko's a tough kid. He, he wants to play. Um, and he doesn't want to sit on the bench. He wants to help his team. He, he's hurt. He tries to play through it. And uh, it took a lot to, to take him out, you know. And uh, obviously, I enjoyed coaching him. I, I, I enjoy even more our relationship uh, that we'll have here moving forward. Been through a lot together, but I think that's what life is all about, you know. You go through difficult times. You trust the ones that you care about and, and love. You fight through those times. And most of the time, you come out on the other end uh, looking pretty good. And I think that defines Aiko for sure. You already joked with him. He's got a home on the broadcast. Whenever he comes back, he's going to oh, be. he'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> Guess color guy. How about the other four seniors? They uh, each contributed in different ways. You've got Rob. He really blossomed throughout his four years. Obviously, Tim. And uh, Tommy and Addy, Addy's going to be in this game a long time. Yeah, you, you said it. You hit it on the, on, the, on the head there. They all contributed in so many different ways. Some that you see on stat sheets and or on your TV screen, and some that people don't see, like, like Tim, Tommy, and Addy, right? Guys that didn't play a lot of minutes, but were incredibly high-character guys that every day came to practice to get the team better, never complained, did what they were asked, and – you know, are all going to get, you know, Rice degrees. And in this case, Tommy, a, a master's in business, an MBA from Rice. And, and Tim got himself so involved on the campus and, and leadership things. And, and that's what it's all about. That's what the college experience should be about. Obviously, I wanted their, their basketball careers to, to be better. 
But sometimes it just doesn't work that way. And that's what Rice is all about to that degree. And in terms of Rob, you know, there, there's a guy you talk about, like, you know, staying with it, not, not leaving when it wasn't going your way after your first two years, and then working to get better, a little change of position, and then boom, the guy flourishes his last two years and was a major part of what we did. Yeah, let's talk about some of the new faces Al's fans will get used to next season. Uh, one, uh, you get Malik Ondigo, very first coach's show. He came on, and he was a hit with me. Uh, so fun to talk to. But what type of player do you expect him to be? Uh, an immediate impact player. Uh, I think Malik changes kind of a little bit of our identity and who we are because, you know, with him and, and Zach and Max and then Elijah coming in, we're, we're going to look different. You know, play bigger, have more length. Malik can score on the block. He's got a great jump hook. He can step out and shoot. He'll be able to help us protect in the rim better than we could this year. You know, obviously, we're, we're really excited to get him on the floor. Yeah, I don't know. Us, we, we both have the gifts of Gab, you know. We, we can talk, uh, but I don't know how we didn't get to. Usually, we talk about those early signees, but you mentioned uh, Melidrel, 6'9", uh, Melidrel Petit, but you also got 6'6", guard Cam Sheffield coming in. Georgia, what, 6A player of the year, state champ. So, discuss those two youngsters. I know no, more will follow, too. These two are two decorated uh, high school athletes, uh, winning player of the year awards, and Melidrel's team lost in the state championship. At the very end, Cam's team won the state championship in overtime. So they're both winners. Uh, they're both exactly the type of kids that, that we want in this program. They're uh, selfless. They're about wanting to win, about wanting to get a Rice degree, about wanting to do great things while here. And so we, we can't wait to get them on campus. And again, I think I know the answer, but fans might want to know, hey, with uh... – with new personnel that we mentioned and with Aiko and Rob leaving, do you expect a different style or still kind of the same pair of pace or what do you expect? Well, you, you change things up according to the personnel that you have. At least that's the way we are. And, and, and we've been able to ad adapt and adjust to certain things. And now we're going to look different next year. I mean, obviously, you know, look at the year Drew had and, and look at the opportunity he has in front of him now. I mean, he, he's such a, what, Swiss army knife or whatever you want to say with all the things that he can do. And he's only going to keep getting better. Uh, we got Peyton now. He's going to be a junior and have more responsibility. Chris, who's played all those minutes. Quincy, who had a really good freshman year. The two big Zach and Max add different things. Toughness, size, ability to score in and out, especially Zach. So we, we're going to look different. Um, and I think that's a good thing because I think it gives us the best chance to win. The ball's going to be down on the block a lot more. and uh, But we'll still – We'll still shoot those threes when we have the opportunity. And look, scoring in transition is a very important part of college basketball. Uh, to go against a set defense every time down the floor is hard. Uh, but we have these guys that can rim run in Malik, Max, Malijal. They, maybe they can get some fast break dunks too just by running out ahead of the pack because a guy like Drew who rebounds so well can just grab it, push it, and go. And same with Peyton and his speed. So we got a lot of versatility, a lot of good things going on. Speaking of Drew, uh, when I talked to other broadcasters, they did their homework, but seeing him every game, what I, ca I came to find is that there's no other player like him really across Conference USA, is there? And I can't wait to see that maturity for his junior season. No, he's unique. Um, and he's fun to coach. Watching his maturity um, has been really fun uh, because obviously he struggled as a freshman, went through some tough times, and he stuck with it. You know, that was the whole thing. Just keep fighting, keep fighting. Think life isn't always easy, you know. And he really did a good job of that. This year he had some huge games. Next year, I, the sky's the limit, you know. It, I know Drew's already one of the guys that can get, I think, do, doing some working out stuff. And and he's so he's going to come back and, you know, hopefully have an all-league type of year. I, that's what we're hoping, and, and that's what we need from him. All right, stay tuned. More here on Rice, Al's Insider. Still a lot to get to with uh, Coach Perra. This segment brought to you by Smart Financial Credit Union. Smart Financial's game plan is simple. People before profits, whether it's saving for retirement, finding your favorite car, buying your dream home, they can help. Text RICE to 276-278 to find out how. More with Coach Perra coming up next after this on Rice, Al's Insider. 
The Wyndham Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the Medical Center, the Museum District, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the Medical Center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Wyndham Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you need a group rate or need 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Beer needs baseball and baseball needs beer. Good thing Little Woodrose has plenty of both. Right in the heart of Rice Village, relax over indoor and outdoor games, sports, and drink specials that even college students can't refuse. With weekly trivias, bingo nights, and fun events, there's always something to do at your favorite local watering hole. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated on all our upcoming events and specials. Little Woodrose, the official Rice Owls game day headquarters. You're listening to Rice Owls Insider. Let's rejoin J.P. Heath. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider. Hope that uh, this quarantine time, this uh, isolation time, uh, number one is uh, meaning your families are safe and protected out there. Please wash those hands. And it's tough, but uh, stay isolated uh, as, as much as, as you can, and that is safe. But this segment brought to us by IBEW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716, where passion and skill locks arms with value. So we did this segment. I really liked it last week, recording with uh, Joe Carl Gar, athletic director, but kind of more lighthearted. Uh, but during the downtime, any extra games, board games, playing with the girls? I mean, what, what do you try to do to kind of keep it light? Honestly, if I tell you this, and you, you might fall off your chair. But <laughs> my, my family, my wife is a big fan of The Bachelor, the TV show. So they got me involved in a little skit that they did, a little reenactment. Uh, that we put out to some family and friends. I actually sent to a few of the guys, too, who, who, who watched it. And so we, we had some fun with that. That's, that was definitely unique. I mean, Coach, this isn't official until it hits social media, so we're going to need a tweet about this, okay? <laughs> I don't know if I'm putting this one out on the air, JP. Okay. I'm going to think about that one. I get the level of embarrassment I'm going to have to endure is going to be very high. <laughs> so besides catching up on The Bachelor, any Netflix, Hulu binges you like to catch up on? No, not a ton. Um, I, we try to think on Netflix, what we watch, watch a couple, you know, just a couple movies, um, not, nothing major, um, spending the time if we can, the girls are being creative. They're doing some painting, doing some art projects. They have some school things they're doing. I, I have spent some time on, on some, uh, like personal improvement stuff, you know, for me, you know, kind of looking at the staff, the program, myself, it's a great time. I think right now to really improve things across the board or take a a great evaluation i should say of what we're doing and and that starts with me and i've done that i've i've been on some webinars uh i've been talking to a lot of other coaches to to you know always try and move forward jp and get better you know i I need to keep improving too you can't just sit still and uh i'm entering my 30th year of doing this and i just want to keep trying to find ways to be better for our guys and better for rice um, your star pupil, James Harden, have you been able to talk to him? How's he handling everything personally and just with the NBA lockdown as well? I, I have talked to him. Um, he was actually maybe a week or so ago, 10 days ago, he called me, uh, wanted to know what the situation was with Rice and could he go shoot? You know, he just wants to shoot basketball, can, as you can imagine. Yeah. And I told him, no, you know, that, no, that wasn't the case. We couldn't do that. But then I had an idea. I, I actually knew a, lo- a place kind of near in between both of us where we lived that I might be able to get him in, and, and I did. And he's been very appreciative of that. And I know he's been able to, to at least shoot, shoot a little bit and get some exercise. And I, I'm sure it's really good for his mind as well because the NBA is trying to figure all of this out as, as well, especially now that the, the Chinese Basketball Association is doing some things. And now I'm reading about maybe they're all going to go to Vegas and be in hotels there and finish the season. They, all kind of ideas are out there, so who knows. Yeah, that was my next question. On road trips, you're always talking to the guys, hey, watch this game, this game. Um, but, like, what do you think the, the NBA does? Do they play in front of no fans or remain to be seen? Obviously, a lot of it. Honestly, I, I have no idea how you even 
I mean, because obviously Adam Silver is engaged in high level conversations with high level doctors and, you know, people that know this, the, these, this virus stuff way, way more than I'd even dream of thinking about. So they're having those conversations. They're trying to figure it out. Look, everybody knows how important sports are for different reasons to people. And now this time where we're all just kind of trying to get through each day, each week, whatever, if they can find a way to do it without risking people's health, then I'm sure they'll do it. And if they can't, then we're just going to sit and wait. And, and that's all done by, like I said, higher level thinking than me. <laughs> and uh, finally, just with that, the downtime coming up, like, uh, any other pl- – I mean, or can you plan too much in the future? Like, you have to keep your schedule open, but how do you handle these next few weeks? Or hopefully it's shorter than that, but how, how do you, you plan for the future with the team and, and personally, of course, too? Well, s- same way. You know, making sure the staff is doing personal improvement things. I'm going to continue to to work on on myself and the program, get a chance to go back and watch some of our games, things we do different. But, again, the personnel is going to be so different, too. So I got to – also create and make sure that that plan is in place for when we are back together again, because we're going to look a little different in terms of size and style. Um, recruiting, you know, on the phone with uh, potential transfers, with, with uh, high school students, and whatever we can do with that. Um, trying to complete our schedule as well for next year. So there's always a lot to do. Look, just because me being home, besides the fact that I can't go on the road and recruit or have kids visit campus, my life isn't a lot different. I mean, in terms of my job, this is what I'd be doing if I was sitting in my office at Rice, right? Watching film, making sure the staff's doing self-improvement, working out our guys and recruiting. And so doing a lot of that stuff, even though I'm, I'm sitting here. Well, Coach, be safe. It was great seeing you again. It seems like months since we had that last game, but uh, be safe and uh, can't wait to actually see you again in person, okay? Yeah, yeah me too, JP. This is a great idea. I love doing it. Anything I can do, uh, don't ever hesitate to call. All right, stay tuned. We're going to end up with Rice House Insider after this. Christian's Tailgate Bar and Grill, voted Houston's best burger. Come by any of the five Houston area Christian's Tailgate locations and enjoy never frozen ground beef on a toasted bun with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, and your choice of cheese. Your award-winning burger is then served with hand-cut fries or buttermilk battered onion rings. Each Tailgate location is a large selection of draft beer and $3 shots. Come early for the game and stay late for karaoke. Christian's tailgate bar and grill with five houston area locations this refreshing message brought to you by love street cold style blonde if you're in the mood for something new that's not really new and actually feels like it's been around the whole time then take a trip down love street this easy drinking anytime cold style blonde goes great with your favorite record and favorite people it's a refreshing beer and a state of mind but i'm just a voice on the radio you should try it out for yourself all you need is Love Street. Brewed with love in Houston, Texas at the Carbach Brewing Company. At Smart Financial, we think your banking experience should feel like a home run. Since 1934, we have prided ourselves on providing hassle-free services with a game plan that focuses on people, not profits. If you live, work, or go to school at or around Rice University, text RICE to 276-278 to become a part of the winning team. That's RICE to 276-278. Smart Financial, proud sponsor of Rice Athletics, federally insured by the NCUA. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider. Hope that this uh, night or day, whenever you tune us in, finds you well in the podcast format and syncing up the video feed as well. Got to do some some touch-ups for the noggin here. But anyway, we make do in these uh, wild times, do we not? But uh, I genuinely mean just hope that everybody is safe out there and uh, just unfortunately, uh, stay away from each other right now. But uh, our next guest coming up next week is uh, the great Tina Langley. Uh, Coach Langley will come on and talk about her first person account of how the season came to an end in that most bizarre of ways that Joe and I referenced uh, last week. They're in the layup line, getting ready to start against Marshall. And then the whole tournament comes to a, a close, like uh, that domino fashion across the rest of college basketball. But I'd like to thank our sponsor, uh, Christian's Tailgate. Appreciate them uh, that Christian's Tailgate, you can um, 
pay them your um, pay them your attention here during this uh, this time of lockdown, and they still have some uh, takeout specials. Uh, 832-925-7922, 832-925-7922, that West U location right by us uh, there at Rice. But uh, they got cheeseburgers, grilled shrimp, salad, quesadillas, buffalo chicken wraps, fried pickles, and wings. Uh, the regular home of the Matt Braga show. And they were nice enough to stay on for this uh, way we manage things here with the Rice House Insider to bring you this new format. Still trying to get you some updated info uh, across Rice Athletics. Really appreciate the time with uh, Coach Para uh, coming on and just discussing what we don't know, just the unknown that is, is out there. But stay tuned for Tina Langley coming up uh, next week. Uh, remember, you can listen to the show. Just go to ricehouse.com. They send a link out every week. And you can also listen to past episodes as well. Just had Athletic Director Joe Carlgaard. We'll have Coach Langley. We're going to try to feature some other Rice athletes, but also get, of course, Coach Braga. It uh, is the place of the Matt Braga show, so we'll have Coach Braga on. And uh, it was a tough baseball season, but we'll talk about uh, some of the positives. And, of course, that's the number one really unknown variable that's going on here, what happens with the uh, spring sport athletes that – is even changed so much since we last uh, spoke about it last week. But uh, any questions at all about Rice Athletics? Uh, Joe last week talked about the uh, ticket refund policy, but if you've got any questions to ask, you can call, excuse me, email riceathletics at rice.edu, riceathletics at rice.edu. This segment brought to you by Carbach Brewing Company, brought to you by Carbach, proudly brewed in Houston, 2302 Carbach Street, Carbot crafted for serious fun. Appreciate their support as well. Well, have a great rest of this day. God bless. Go Owls. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next Rice Owls Insider. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield IMG College, you've been listening to Rice Owls Insider. Today's show was presented by Christian's Tailgate, voted best burger in Houston. Carbot Brewing Company, crafted for serious fun. IBEW Local Union Number 716. And by Houston Methodist, leading medicine. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation on the Rice Sports Network.